Hey nerds, I am out on a Sunday morning uh, looking around at mushrooms in my favorite Raleigh office park. Um, I'm in a little bit of a uh, mixed woods environment here, but it's mostly pine. And as a result of that, I have found uh, one of the most common mushroom genera you will ever see. Uh, this is the Russula genus. And, um, if you're a beginner or you've never really noticed mushrooms before uh, and start to look around for them, Russellas are going to jump right out at you. Um, there are about 100 and, uh, excuse me, 750 acknowledged species of Russula. So uh, as with a lot of areas of mushroom hunting, it can be really easy to say, okay, this is a mushroom in the, in the um, Russula genus. And I have a couple of ideas of what species it could be, but uh, I got a really good piece of advice from um, you know an official mycologist who said, look, uh, if you find a red Russula mushroom, you can decide whether or not to go crazy uh, trying to figure out what it is, or you can uh, just say it's a red Russula mushroom and it is either a spicy red Russula mushroom or it is a non-spicy red Russula mushroom. So um, before I get into the questions around uh, flavor and how to determine that, the uh, Russula genus in general is really easy to identify uh, it's, uh, because it's a very consistent sort of growth form and it is, uh, you know, fairly distinct. So first of all, you're looking at a really classic cap and stem mushroom. You do have a lot of different colored Russulas. Many of them are in this uh, pink, red, brick colored uh, spectrum. You get a lot of purple ones. Uh, this is one that I've found that I'm rather fond of. There's uh, a whole uh, cluster of greenish Russulas, some of which are delicious. And, uh, and I just love green mushrooms. They're kind of uncommon, despite the fact that almost every other organism that they share habitat with are in fact green. So anyway, um, enough rambling from me. So cap and stem jobber, uh, the main thing that distinguishes Russula from other mushrooms is that it is very brittle. So it's predeterminate. Basically, uh, the baby mushroom just sort of blows up full of water, which is also why you have a really consistent uh, growth form. So some mushrooms will come up and they'll sort of mutate depending on weather conditions or the substrate they're growing in. But Russulas are just sort of like, nope, pop, I'm gonna go from baby mushroom to big mushroom. So as a result of that, they're very, very brittle. Um, and so you can snap them open like a piece of chalk. And uh, this is a really distinguishing characteristic because most mushrooms, their um, you know, stems are either fibrous or uh, often they are hollow, uh, but they don't snap open cleanly like that. One note on this is uh, Russellas, like a lot of other mushrooms, get pests and uh, insects that usually start in the uh, base of the stem and then kind of work their way up and lay eggs and do all kinds of cool things. So sometimes you'll find a Russula, like this is a good example of one, it will not snap open like a piece of chalk because it's been uh, munched on in the inside. But if you do find a fresh Russula, it will snap open and uh, it's a very distinctive kind of experience. <laughs> um, also, they have white gills. Um, there are a lot of dangerous mushrooms that have white gills. so. Russulas, uh, many of them are edible if they are non-spicy, uh, but if you're an absolute beginner, I would say don't bother trying to eat Russulas for two reasons. First of all, uh, white gilled mushrooms, again, identification errors, although kind of unlikely, are still just way too drastic. Like we have death cat mushrooms and destroying angels and all kinds of other menacing species uh, that have white gills. So, uh, but they do have those. And again, this uh, fruiting body is really, uh, it just crumbles apart in your hands. And uh, as a result of this, um, they're really fun to throw and hit people with, uh, especially if they're unsuspecting. Um, you can't see it explode, but I just tossed it off to the right and it just it did this lovely sort of like shatter splat thing. It's very unique and lovely. So um, I don't eat Russulas uh, because it's an abundance thing. Uh, you know, they are kind of bland uh, if they are not spicy. And so, uh, and also because they're kind of brittle, you have to be a little bit more uh, fiddly with them and a little more skilled than I am in the kitchen. Uh, so down to the spicy, not spicy thing. This is um, a very common practice in mushroom identification is to actually taste some of the fruiting body. Typically that's not necessary. So you have a lot, all your senses are involved in mushroom identification. You're gonna feel it and see if it's snotty. You're going to smell it and see if it smells like socks or anise. You're gonna obviously, you know, do a lot of physical uh, or visual inspection. 
Um, but with some uh, mushrooms, it is actually, um, you know, prudent, especially in the case of Russula, to give it a taste. You just take a little bit of the cap, you know, not all that much. I'm not going to swallow it. I just give it a chew. And what I'm looking for here is whether it tastes completely bland and kind of um, almost waterly, watery and just, you know, uh, not a really distinctive flavor or a really, really hot spice. So sort of like uh, if I dip the tip of my tongue in cayenne pepper. So we're gonna see what happens. Um, <clears throat> and again, a lot of red russula mushrooms have this feature. Uh, and so I think there's probably about a 50-50 chance. So we'll see what happens. Okay, there it is. So that's a really, really spicy one. Uh, the tip of my tongue is burning. It's not gonna hurt me, especially because I didn't swallow it. If I did eat it, I would probably get sick. Uh, but, you know, the very prospect of eating something so spicy, which is now causing me to salivate, it's really wonderful, um, it's just not uh, appealing whatsoever. So, um, you know, again, Russell mushrooms are really fun because they're so colorful. Uh, some of the finest mushroom pictures I've ever seen are Russellas. Uh, with 750 species and also a really long uh, growth season, they're kind of, um, you know, something that you can learn about any time of year. Uh, I suffer personally from a condition that I call PMSD, which is post-mushroom season depression. And so we're moving into that period of time right now where in North Carolina, most of our mycelium uh, goes into a vegetative state and hibernates essentially for the next few months. And uh, that can bring on a lot of uh, rending of hair and gnashing of teeth and disappointment and uh, broken friendships. So in an effort to ameliorate the, the uh, you know, deleterious effects of this condition, I oftentimes am like, okay, I'll go for a walk, see what red rustlas I can find, see if I find uh, something even more interesting, like a green rustla, taste it, and at the very least, I feel like I've done something nerdy and scientific for the day. So um, I guess final concluding thoughts on rustla. Uh, certainly if you are the kind of person who wants to know every last thing uh, that you can eat, because you're getting ready for the apocalypse or you just want to freak out your parents or whatever it happens to be, rustlas are actually a kind of a good area to look because if they are uh, palatable, they're fine. Um, but fine is, you know, fine safe, not fine delicious. Um, you know, and some of them are, are quite nice and, and I, I don't mean to speak ill of, uh, of the genus in general because I know some people who are very fond of them. So anyway, uh, snippety snap, throw them at your friends, taste them. Um, definitely you'll get pictures of them from friends and family because they're so colorful, noticeable, and they just grow absolutely everywhere. Anyhow, that's the uh, Russell Legitas in a nutshell.